Hello and welcome back to Radio 2. So today we're continuing with compiling news, sport, weather and traffic. And we're starting with part six of 12. So we're almost halfway there. Or we're almost halfway through. Today we'll be concentrating on reading the bulletin. So we'll be looking at page 192 to 194 in Next Level Radio. And then we'll be looking at news anchoring in Beyond Powerful Radio from page 275 until page 282, if you want to follow along. So there are four pillars of content that are important in radio. Regardless of the kind of radio station, these four factors will always be present, okay? Um, first and foremost, a radio station must serve to inform its listeners. The very first types of information that are critical when it comes to informing listeners are those that affect the listener in their direct environment, aka my surroundings. And these comprise of news, sport, traffic and weather. News is the segment of content that a listener can obtain every hour, sometimes even twice an hour, depending on the radio station, in a neatly packaged bulletin or report that contains a number of stories with supporting information. At most radio stations, a news bulletin is followed by um, a report on the sport or the traffic and the weather. Sport is important uh, because it's a particular type of news that garners a lot of interest from any listener base. So we're going to be talking about the process involved in selecting different sports on which to report and how to tell great stories of the athletes, the players and the coaches involved in specific sports. Obviously, at the moment, that's something that will be very applicable because of the Olympics. So in this case, normally what they would do is they would add in a couple of more sport bulletins specifically, or they'd have a specific sport feature purely centered around the happenings of the Olympics. Sport as a subject can unify provinces and nations with its ever-changing environment. So it's that thing about who gets picked up, who gets dropped, what qualifies, who qualifies and who doesn't, who gets injured and who makes a comeback. There's always so much to write about and to share on air. And then we have the weather and the traffic. These need live and regular updating because every person is affected by the weather and or the traffic. Before we get started, what I want you to do for me is to start noting this while we're going through the lesson, because this is what I want you to do at the end of it. I want you to conduct a content analysis of a newscast, whether radio or TV is up to you. The analysis can focus on words or delivery methods or vocal changes or any number of news characteristics mentioned in the text. OK, so I just want you to focus on a content analysis. These are tips from reporters of various newsrooms who share their most important lessons. And let's start from the top then. The first one, talk to one listener at a time. Remember, you speak to one person. Radio is um, connect. Radio is one on one. So one person at a time. Use silence. It's powerful. If there's a big silence gap, use it. Avoid cliches. Get new ideas from calling on old story sources. Off the record means off the record. Don't burn your sources. You might need them again. Is collecting audio actuality or doing an interview worth the effort? Can you better use the little time that you have um, on another story? That's something that you need to keep in mind because um, deadlines are very tight on uh, news reporting. Local lights. Know your city and use familiar terms for things. Keep a tease a tease. Make them want more later. Okay, so don't give away everything at once. Don't use the same lead that the reporter uses. It's lazy and boring and it makes you look stupid. Rewrite all the source material and use multiple versions. Don't use the eight o'clock copy at the nine o'clock for the nine o'clock news bulletin. 
use one thought per sentence, one thought per actuality. Write to be heard. Maintain a sense of speech rhythm in your writing. Read it out loud before you read it on air. Avoid statistics if you can. Listeners don't usually remember them. No one knows what's in your sound recorder or on your computer um, or on your phone except for you. Only use the best and the most powerful sounds. Save time by listening to recorded audio um, on the way back to your studio. So mentally have your multi versions ready to go before you start editing. Make decisions. You will never get every detail into a story. Decide what goes in and what to leave out of each story version. Okay, now I want you to turn to page um, 231. So let's quickly look at Valerie Geller's tips. So at the top there, page 231, Valerie Geller, Geller Media International's tips for creating powerful news. Number two, describe things visually, paint word pictures. Number three, write shorter. Use fewer words, but make them count. When in doubt, leave it out. Use effective storytelling techniques. Tell stories the way you would tell them to friends. Number five, use natural sound. Number six, stay objective. Keep your opinion out of the story, but put your humanity into it. Number seven, really listen when you are interviewing. Ask simpler questions. Know when to ask a what and a how question versus a yes or a no question. Number eight, understand your story well enough that if the copy blew away, you could still continue the poll. You can still continue your report. Number nine, Make the news part of your station's programming, not an interruption. Tease upcoming news between newscasts. And lastly, number 10, present a solution for every problem if possible. Then there are some final tips for writing great news bulletins. And these are, repetition is the most common error made with regards to leads in radio news. Do not repeat yourself. Avoid technical terms or jargon that will go over the heads of the public. Check your facts. Journalistic credibility is at stake, so don't be careless. Limit the number of figures that you include. Use the active voice. Write in the present tense to create a sense of immediacy. Be objective in your writing. Do not editorialize. Never plagiarize. Do not copy words from a press release verbatim. Paint a picture that someone can imagine in their mind. In their mind. With practice, the bulletins you have written must invite the audience to imagine the scene rather than them having to piece the story together themselves. So we've looked at tips in detail and tricks and things uh, with regards to news and what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing. But now we're getting into the nitty gritties. So the actual reading of the bulletin on air. So at this point, the bulletin should be read and it can be, re it can be read by either the writer, the journalist or a radio news reader. There are a few rules for delivering a powerful news bulletin on air. And these are to start with the background, not foreground. Remember that reading the news must grab your attention. A good news reader demands that listeners pay attention and cuts through the clutter of everyday life. But do not let a quest for brevity leave your story incomplete. The next one there is to air is human. Newsreaders make mistakes and sometimes misread their script lines. It happens. Mistakes are normal and will never be entirely avoidable. Whether they were distracted or hit a word like someone's name that they struggle to pronounce, the beauty of radio is that mistakes are soon forgotten in the excitement of the live environment. 
The best approach is to stop, apologize, and start at the beginning of the line again. Always correct a mistake rather than pretending it never happened. It's also important that a newsreader develops their own style. Follow the rules, but try to be creative. And then radio is a one-on-one -on -one medium. The newsreader is telling the story in a, matter, in a manner that feels like it is happening face-to-face -face and one-on-one. -on -one. This is the true essence of a radio medium. It is portable and personal. It should therefore be delivered as though it is being directly delivered to a friend rather than a collective nameless and faceless mass. Then the what, why and how before, who, when and where most of the time. When reading the bulletin, be sensitive to how the story will affect the listener, why that is the case and what the possible change entails. This gives the story a we are in it together feel that bridges the distance between on-air presenters and listeners. Read stories before reading them. It might sound obvious, but many newsreaders wing it with a bulletin while live on air. The bulletin may have come in late from the newsroom. A presenter may have distracted the newsreader prior to the bulletin being due to start, or there may have been a guest in studio who needed the newsreader's attention, and the newsreader therefore did not have a chance to read the bulletin through before reading it live on air. A lack of read through preparation will almost always result in misreading the bulletin, which sounds unprofessional and unprepared. At best, this makes the time taken to read the news longer than the show anticipated, which will throw out the whole schedule and at worst, will lose the respect of the listeners who tune out. It's imperative to take the time as a newsreader to prepare for each bulletin live on air. Sound paints a picture and creates energy. A good radio story should have sound that imprints pictures in the minds of the listener. You could read a story about a hurricane and get all the facts, but if you add sound to the wind, then you use the radio medium best. Always try to obtain sound bites where possible. Hearing someone else's voice, the proverbial horse's mouth, lends credibility and it breaks up any mon monotony that comes with listening to one voice for a sustained period of time. Again, these should be listened to before they are played live on air, ensuring that they are the correct sound bites for the correct story. Just consider how many times you have been annoyed when a news uh, presenter says, apologies for that incorrect sound bite. And then a pause refreshes. Utilize a fraction of a second pause for emphasis. The ever so slight elongation of a word will stress its importance, which will draw out the listener's attention. And then this point is quite important. If it were so easy, there would be tons of great newsreaders. If you listen closely to a variety of newsreaders, you might think that most of them sound dull and boring. This is usually because they fear to go beyond the acceptable to reach the exceptional. Or they lack practice, which is a sign of laziness. Or they lack coaching or air checking, which is a sign of the station's laziness. If you are learning the trait of a newsreader, then here are a couple more tips for you. Firstly, ensure that you follow ongoing air checks and implement the program manager's advice on how to constantly improve. Be your own critic, demand the best from yourself and hone your craft. Send your work to people you know and trust. Ask for and accept their critique and acquire mentors who can coach you. Okay, so let's move on to Valerie Guedero's book, Beyond Powerful Radio, and turn to page 279. 
if you anchor or present the news, whether you or someone else on your staff did the actual writing, it's you that the audience will connect to. Yours is the name the public knows and yours is the voice they hear. If the job is well done, listeners stick around, rating results and management will applaud. If you do not communicate powerfully, listeners will leave. If we look at Beyond Powerful Radio at page 278, the, at the top it says, fight your fears. Everyone wants to do the perfect, flawless newscast. That's a good goal, but a fear of making mistakes may end up being the thing that keeps you from being a good anchor. How? come when you use your full, full vocal instrument. If you read every word individually while be, being oh so careful, you will sound like a robot instead of a human being. You will be boring and lifeless on the air. Let's look at the list to create radio news with ear appeal, as it's called. Firstly there, open your news with a sounder or a great story. To grab attention and to set it apart from the other entertainment on the station. Use the station name or call letters at the opening of the newscast, at the closing of the newscast, going into the commercial, coming out of the commercial, into the sports segment, in the weather segment, within at least one story. Ditch all wire service copy. Rewrite every story in your own words. Tell the story, don't read the story. Rewrite multiple versions for ongoing stories. Put what before who. Never start a story with a source. Phrases like police say, or Senator Joe Jones say, or the Red Cross reports makes weak openers because these guys say things all the time. Most of the time it is what they say, what is in it for the listeners, and what happened that's important, not who is saying it. Open with action words. Use powerful verbs that clearly tell immediately what the whole story is about. Keep actualities and sound bites short and colorful. Avoid using sound just for the sake of using audio. Remember, a good movie director leaves a lot of film on the cutting room floor. Try to put only the great stuff on the radio. A rule of thumb is one thought per actuality. Never put a dull spokesperson on air. If you can say it better and quicker than a boring expert, do it yourself. Commercial radio is a headline service. No matter what a news writer thinks, a story becomes bulky and hard to digest after about three lines, unless it is an ultra hot breaking event. Research indicates listeners feel most satisfied when hearing a lot of items rather than a lot of details, details on a few items. In your newscast, try fitting in more short stories instead of a few longer ones. Promote your newscast about 10 minutes before it airs. Bring on the newscaster um, to deliver a couple of quick teasers. In talk radio, these can provide many magic moments. The best two stories to tease are usually the top story and the kicker. And then don't sweat it. How long should it take to write a story? Not long. If you understand your story, it should take about as long to write as it does to tell. Read it out loud as you write to make sure it sounds conversational. Use a checklist when training new broadcast news anchors, reporters and producers. Just as a pilot does his or her checklist before taking off in an airplane, double check the list before you go on air. Avoid the disaster of incomplete stories or items without purpose or focus that are boring. 
Make sure all your news stories contain all of the following. The who, what, where, why, when, and how, aka how it happens, how it affects people, how much it costs, how it can be solved, and ask a final how. How would you tell the story to a friend? Then, the checklist for powerful news. Firstly, what is the subject? Is this new information? Who cares? How will this matter to your audience? Would you have a conversation with someone about the story of air? Does the story affect health or safety, human emotions, money, or other concerns of our listeners? How? Is it visual? Can a listener see the story in his or her mind's eye? Is the writing clearly understandable? Do you understand the story? Could you tell the story on air without reading it? And then go global. How big can the story be? Can a huge national or international story be told with a local angle? If so, how? Think local. For example, Best Oil Company has been ordered to pay $100 million to clean up the largest toxic spill ever to hit the American Southwest. But right here in Franklin, the Environmental Protection Agency reports some, danger, some dangerous pesticides leaking into our groundwater. The cost of cleaning that up will be high. If there are several angles to the story, can multiple versions be made? Does the story have a second day angle or potential for Monday morning? Can it be used on a slow news day? Double check your work before it goes to air. When you are pressured or in a hurry, it's easy to leave out one or more important elements. Make sure the story contains everything important. So news reading is a very important role. It really is. Um, and it tends to be very serious most of the time. But I thought let's break the monotony a little bit about me telling you about the news and let's look at how a news anchor reads the news. And then I'm going to show you some bloopers of things, how things can go wrong um, when it comes to reading the news. And former President Jacob Zuma will not be in court today for his plea hearing, this in his corruption trial, and the matter is expected to be postponed. Zuma's legal team will ask for a postponement due to his ongoing hospitalization. Zuma was admitted to hospital for observation last week, and he was taken to hospital from the Escort Correctional Center, where he is serving a 15-month sentence for contempt of court. His lawyers are expected to provide an affidavit for his doctor to justify their application for for the postponement. Eskom says that staff involved in the procedure that led to Sunday night's explosion at the Madupi power station will be placed under precautionary suspension pending an investigation. The power utility has confirmed that the explosion at Madupi's Unit 4 caused extensive damage to the generator. And Eskom says that it will keep the public up to date on any effect that the incident will have on power supply. The 6,787 new COVID-19 infections have been recorded in South Africa. The National Institute for Communicable Diseases has also reported 199 new COVID-19-related deaths, and that brings the total number of fatalities to over 75,000. Hello and welcome. Also on Chef was Constance Landry. She says she's lived here her entire life, almost 80 years, been through just about everything. 80 years old. Well, just about. I'm sorry, Miss Constance. 76 to be exact. No, 75. 75. Are you coming back to New Orleans and New Orleans East? Is the elephant heavy? I'm coming back, baby. The roads in Susquehanna County have people effed up. Uh, 
fed up, sorry, PennDOT held a forum tonight for residents to explain what's next. Fox 56's Victoria Halicard joins us live in Montrose to explain how much longer drivers have to wait. Victoria. Check your panties. About 175,000 rice. I think that was supposed to be pantries. <laughs> About 175,000 rice and slow cookers are being recalled due to fire and electric shock <laughs> hazards. Police was trying to do a stop point. The man said no, not today. And they began to race behind each other like cats and dogs. And the police car just twisted around like a tornado girl. And the Lord just shook it up and the man just got injured. His head went to one side and his body went to the other side. And girl, he hit the pole. I was actually going to buy me a piece of um, burger from Burger King. And I just stopped right in the middle because my hunger just went away. As the adage says, you give a poor man a fish and you feed him for a day. You teach him to, f to fish. You give him, you give him, and, and no, 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 no. All right, Mike, so are we gonna have some barbecue weather or? Uh... You're gonna have some wet meat out there. <laughs> 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 Oh, that's gross. Okay, so there we had the news headlines, so South Africa news headlines, and we had a couple of news bloopers, okay? Things that can go wrong, because that can go wrong, because sometimes, you know, you just have to laugh as well. Quiz time. So let's start with the multiple choice. Choose the best answer according to the text. Number one, a good radio news lead typically chooses from these three factual leads. A, who, why, and where. B, how, why, and when. Number C, what, why, where. Or D, what, why, how. Number two, in order to fight through the clutter of the radio listening environment, a radio news anchor would choose this lead to begin the story. A, you'll pay more at the pump this morning. B, the Lundberg report states gasoline prices rose three cents per gallon yesterday. C, a recent gas consumer survey says oil companies continue to gouge the little guy. Or D, area gas prices jumped to $3 a gallon in just over a week. Then number three, a public speaking technique useful for radio news anchor would be A, using over-exaggerated gestures, B, the fraction of a second pause, C, consistent eye contact with the audience, or D, a clear, distinguishable voice. Then true or false, number four, newswire stories should never be rewritten since they come from professional news services like AP, UP, Reuters, or BBC. And number five, it's permissible for an anchor to use the second person pronoun you in a newscast. Lastly, short answer, describe how a local story, you can choose any, any topic, can achieve national attention in just a matter of hours. And then use the guidelines described in this, chat, in this chapter and elsewhere in the text to explain this current phenomenon. So if we go back to key lecture points, you should be discovering that anchors must know news fundamentals. You should learn that anchoring is an extension of radio's one-to-one -one report with listeners and then even if someone else writes the story, the anchor must still grab the listener's attention through delivery techniques. Okay, that brings us to the end of this lecture. By now, you should have a very firm grasp 
on news in detail in how to prepare it, how to put a bulletin together, as well as how to then read said bulletin. And with that, I say goodbye for now. Until next time, bye.